What movie do you consider perfect? Hot fuzz. Not a single line of dialogue is wasted in that movie. Everything is significant and comes back into play later on. What made you want to become a policeman? Officer. What made you want to become a policeman officer? You did good kid. Ta, what's your name? Aaron A. Aronson. Sorry? P.I. Staker. Can't find anyone saying 12 angry men. Alien. Aliens too. Then stop. The Iron Giant. I am not a gun. The Hunt for Red October. Believable characters. Believable tech even for the one bleeding edge thing that underpins the whole movie. Deaths are few and significant. Very little in the way of special effects so what is there doesn't screw things up too badly. It's a repeat watch for me. I would like to have seen Montana. Airplane. This is one of those movies that's the equivalent of the Balmer peak. If the comedy broke just a little, or the timing was off, it would be really bad. Instead it's comedic genius from Mrs. Brady being the only one who could speak jive to all the exterior shots of a jet that has propeller noises. Edit. Thank all 300 of you who have correctly pointed out that it was Mrs. Clever. I've been watching that movie for decades and only now noticed the propeller thing. That's hilarious. The Shawshank Redemption. This is because, before anything, it is written exceptionally well. Every sequence, every scene, every beat, is captivating. Back to the Future, the first one, though I do enjoy the other two. The dialogue is brilliantly tight, the acting is incredible and the story while bizarre is original and executed flawlessly and includes some truly iconic sequences. The skateboard chase scene, the insane bedroom scene with his mom, the parking lot knockout, the Johnny B, good sequence, etc. Also, the whole aesthetic of the movie is one big masterpiece. The set pieces, the cinematography, the soundtrack, it all fits together as one. When I think of movie magic, this is one of the movies that comes to mind. Edit. Thanks for the gold, upvotes, karma. Haven't got this many points in anything since that time I flipped my car on the highway. Second edit. Saw a few comments about how weird it is. And there's more than one weird part of this movie. That George hires Biff years later and is cool with him being around. I always thought it was way darker than that. George hit Biff so hard that he lost consciousness for several minutes. In real life. That means serious brain damage. Which would explain how dopey Biff is later on. But George wasn't content with that. He wanted to subtly control Biff psychologically for the rest of his life. And so, he did, to make it even darker. In BTTF2 Biff briefly wakes up from being knocked out as Marty is standing over Hi Monsieur what? Does Marty do? He violently fist blasts him directly in the face at a 90 degree angle hard enough to knock him fully unconscious a second time. We never see how badly that truly wrecks him in the alternate future. Fun fact, one of the studio execs wanted to title it Spaceman from Pluto. Goodfellas. One of the few movies where I am completely engaged the entire way through. I've seen Scorsese say that he wanted it to be like a movie trailer that just kept on going. Princess Bride, a lot because of its broad appeal. Everyone from age 5 to 90 can enjoy it. Kinda like Lego, once you turn 91 plus you can never enjoy it again. Studio Ghibli Movies, Spirited Away is my particular favorite. One of Miyazaki's masterpieces. When you watch his early films and read his interviews from the 80s and 90s you get the sense that he was building for something he had in his head but hadn't gotten to the point where he felt he could put it on screen. I feel that Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle are the culminations of that work. Die Hard. Perfect action movie. Also, Alan Rickman. Edit. Yippee ki yay. I got gold for mentioning the best Christmas movie ever. Thank you. Jake Peralta. Cool 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 cool. Threat Level Midnight, Wally. You know you like a film when you bother to actually have the dot in the title. 
Raiders of the Lost Ark is the perfect action movie for me. The intro to Indiana Jones in the Jungle is perfect. Even with little dialogue, the pacing is great, the characters are solid, the humor is natural, the environments are diverse, and the music is unforgettable. Just an awesome, fun time. I love Raiders but I feel like there are a lot of developments that happen in it just because. Indy and Marion used to have a relationship. Now Marion hates Hi Monsieur. Until the next scene where she decides that she doesn't. Indy is a skeptic who doesn't believe in God. Until the end of the movie where he suddenly thinks that he and Marion should close their eyes when. The Nazis open the Ark. There's a point A and a point B. But there isn't a whole lot about what happens in between these two major character developments. On the other hand, you know what movie does this really well? The Last Crusade. That whole movie is about Indy and Henry Sr. mending a broken relationship and learning to respect one another. We see why they don't get along throughout the whole movie. Yet they both share multiple moments that bring them closer. So when Indy's dad calls him, Indiana, and tells him to let the grail go, that moment is totally earned. Two great movies. One is an iconic classic, but the other is perfect. In my opinion, let's not forget the awkward bond of Junior and Senior realizing they're Eskimo brothers. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I recently watched this. What makes it great is that it feels like a parody of modern-day fantasy despite being almost 50 years old. Edit. I thought it came out in 1971. It actually came out in 1975. So it's still quite a while until it's 50 years old. Some watery tart distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. Jurassic Park. Goodwill Hunting. I love the scene where Ben Affleck tells him his best part of his day where Will leaves no goodbye. And how he has a gift and owes it to those around him to use it. Such a powerful scene. Oh brother, where art thou hands down? Well isn't this place a geographical oddity? Two weeks from everywhere. I suppose it would be the acme of foolishness to inquire if you were to have a hairnet about. There's a bunch in Yon Vera. Mr. Sogwalops matter of fact. You can help yourself. I won't be needin' e monsieur. Office space. Edit. Thank you Redditors for some hilarious comments and threats. Edit. Thank you kind Redditor for the silver. Edit. Thank you for the gold. Dash. I now have two pieces of flair. My only complaint is that it hurts to watch because it's too real. You monsieur, yeah, I'm going to need you to go ahead and upvote this movie, that would be great. The room monsieur, getting 0 100s on a multiple choice test is still a type of perfect score. And the same thing is true for Tommy Wiseau, does not receive high marks. As they said in asterisk into the Spider-Verse asterisk, if you just guess on every question on a multiple choice test, you'll get a 50 100. The only way to get a zero is if you know all the answers. Tommy Wiseau is a visionary. Edit. It was actually a true, false test still. The point of how hard it is to get a zero one hundredths if you don't know what you're doing stands. Wouldn't it be a twenty-five one hundredths? There are four questions on a multiple choice test, right? In Spider-Verse, it's specifically a true, false test. Pirates of the Caribbean. The Curse of the Black Pearl. That's not to say it's actually all that good a film. But it does everything it sets out to do. Fun without being childish. Clever without being pretentious. Dark without being grim. And a killer soundtrack. The Curse of the Black Pearl was one of the last movies where I got that classic. Fun adventure movie feel. The kind you get from movies like Indiana Jones. The Mummy. 1999. Princess Bride, and plenty of cheesy 80s adventure flicks that I don't remember right now. The Prestige, has big names, good unexpected and believable twists, a touch of sci-fi, and touches on some interesting moral, ethical dilemmas that humanity might need to deal with one day. Fellowship of the Ring, honestly all three of them are amazing. I sort of consider all three to be one big movie. Stand by me. Groundhog Day. Don't forget Groundhog Day. 
Groundhog Day 2 Man, Young Frankenstein Wow, Gold Twice, Thanks Kind Strangers, But It Is Like The Best Movie, Frau Blucher, The Matrix, No Country For Old Men, The Fact I've Only Seen This Movie Once, Nearly Two Years Ago And Still Think Back On It And Feel Really Uncomfortable Speaks Volumes To How Effective It Was, Asterisk Asterisk What About Bob? Asterisk Asterisk Richard Dreyfuss legitimately hated Bill Murray on set. Julie Hagerty is a comic genius. Charlie Porsmo puts in a child performance for the ages. And for bonus a young Catherine Herb from Law & Order. Dreyfuss in an interview said that Bill Murray got drunkenly belligerent. Yelled at the top of his lungs to Dreyfuss, nobody likes you. And then threw a glass ashtray at Richard Dreyfuss's head. I'm partial to believe Dreyfus as I've heard similar stories about Bill Murray. But I'm also partial in believing what Murray said was accurate. Because I've heard countless stories regarding actors who hated working with Dreyfus. Gladiator. Character development. The pace. The ending. Everything was perfect. Edit. Thanks for my first silver. The first Blues Brothers. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We have a full tank of gas. Half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. One of the best exchanges of dialogue in film happens early in the movie. Elwood. Shit. Jake. What? Elwood. Rollers. Jake. No. Elwood. Yep. Jake. Shit. So simple, but conveys significant amounts about the characters. Jake. How often does the train go by? Elwood, so often you won't even notice it. It took me years to understand, actually pay attention, to that line. How to train your dragon. When an expecting kinda rubbish kids film with a not at all catchy title. Ended up being a deep story about how humans slaughter these creatures that exist under a dictatorship of mind control and the threat of being killed. On top of that there is a bunch of rich dragon lore. The sequels are great as well. Yeah holy shit, I went into HTTYD2 expecting a cheesy DreamWorks sequel. But it hit me in the feels really fucking hard. Greater than, when Stoic meets up with his wife for the first time and they share that dance. I was in tears. Less than, The Godfather. Pulp Fiction, that's some gourmet shit. Catch me if you can. Children of Men, its cinematography is incredible. The acting and story flow of events is also perfect. Everything came together and it's beautiful. Edit. This got a lot of responses. If you haven't seen this movie, tread lightly reading the replies to my comment. As there are tons of spoilers. And this movie is probably the last movie you want spoiled. Not that you want any movie spoiled but still. Tilda Tilda Forest Tilda Tilda Forest Gump OMG my first silver. Thank you so much random stranger laughing face. Into the Spider-Verse, love it. Spider-Verse was incredible. The script, the animation, the soundtrack, and the voice talent were all next level. I saw it in the theater when it was first released and had fairly low expectations. Partly due to the title of the move as well as it being, yet another Spider-Man, superhero movie. I left the theater beaming. Big Lebowski. That's just like your opinion man. Fargo. You okay over dear Margie? Oh yeah, you betcha. Inglorious Bastards. Best ending for every character. Tarantino's best. I have to agree with you here. Christoph Waltz played the perfect villain. It's a movie with Hitler in it and he isn't even the main villain. Shows you how bad land is. Fight Club. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.